Hi, everybody. This is Dave Vellante. We're here at Wikibon headquarters. Adam Fuchs is back. He's the CTO and founder of Squirrel. We've been doing a number of whiteboard sessions around Accumulo, some of the innovations that Accumulo brings, some of the things that Squirrel has added to Accumulo. You hear a lot about schemaless databases in the NoSQL database world. Well, how do you build structure and add schema to a schema light uh, environment? And that's what Adam's going to talk about today. So Adam, take it away. All right, thanks, Dave. Yeah, so I, I get a lot of um, folks asking me, you know, once I've got my database up and running, I can store key value pairs in it, I can do searches, I can do range queries for those, but how do I organize my data? Uh, you know, and there are basic ways of organizing their data and there are, there are some more complex ones. And we're going to touch on a, a couple of more complex concepts there. One of them is denormalizing data, bringing it together to answer a particular set of queries. Uh, and the other is secondary indexing. Uh, so I'm going to show you uh, a, a basic uh, diagramming technique that we use to diagram data models inside of Accumulo. Uh, and then I'm going to show you how that applies to indexing techniques. All right, so, so to start off here, we'll look at a simple organization of data, uh, which we have diagrammed here in what I like to call a hierarchical data decomposition diagram. Obviously, I need to find a better name for that. But uh, uh, what we have is essentially a data set centered around people. And people have friends. Uh, you know, they're friends with other people. There's some history of those relationships. Uh, they, ha they have things that they own, and maybe there's a count of those things. Uh, so inside of Accumulo, uh, we have a couple of uh, features for uh, storing and retrieving data. We can insert keys in random order. So we can uh, transform this data into a set of key value pairs, uh, insert them, update them in random order. Uh, but then when we query them, essentially we're limited to range queries inside of that key space. Uh, so a range in a sorted key space actually turns into a, a hierarchy in in the uh, row, column family, column qualifier value format. So every key has elements in it. It's got a row, a column family, a column qualifier, and these are associated with a, a value or potentially a set of values. Uh, so if I have a range, I can select a particular row. I can select a row in a particular column family. I can se select column qualifiers under that. And in fact, I can select prefixes of those elements as well. Uh, so if I want to query for a set of people and all of the things about them, if I use this hierarchical data decomposition, then I can query for prefi prefixes in this tree structure. Uh, so a range would translate into a single person, or a person and their friends, or a, a person and their, their uh, particular other friend. Right? Any of those hierarchies inside of this uh, hierarchical organization um, really translates into a very simple query for Accumula. Uh, so if we take this abstract view and we instantiate it, here we have Alice and Bob, you know, which are two people in our person table. And Alice has friends. Alice is friends with Bob and Charlie, and they have some history. Uh, Alice also owns a couple of Oldsmobiles, and you know, Bob is over here, has a couple of friends, and owns five houses. Uh, why not? All right, so this is what, what we've done here is essentially we've grouped all of the information associated with those people together so that we can query them all at the same time. Uh, so if you think about a document store in general where you might have a hierarchical document, you know, if you, got a, you have a number of features that are all grouped together underneath that, the title of that document, we've done a similar thing here. Um, and in fact, in this instantiated view, I can take a traversal of the tree from root down to leaf, right? and this actually forms a key value pair. Uh, so Alice being perhaps the, the row portion of that key, Alice's, uh, you know, the fact that Alice owns something being the column family, and the thing that she owns being the column qualifier, and then the count being uh, the value in that case. All right, so, so we have a number of concepts that sort of uh, tag along with this mapping of, con of uh, data concept into key portion. Uh, in the row portion here, uh, what we're doing there is really controlling how the data gets partitioned throughout the cluster. Uh, inside of the column family, we're doing column-based partitioning. Right? So these are locality groups or vertical orientation of the database. Inside of the column qualifier, 
that's where we put anything else that has to do with uniqueness, right? So row, column family, and column qualifier de determine the uniqueness of the thing that we're trying to store. And then the value is, you know, any extra information that we would want to tag on to that. Um, so here, a very basic concept. We can also take this, this basic diagramming technique and we can make uh, a couple of other uh, abstract versions of it. Uh, so some basic models that we use, or some basic table designs that we use uh, for indexing in particular, uh, uh, one of them is a document table with an inverted index uh, table. So these are two tables that we would pair together. The document table is organized by having uh, UUIDs, or just IDs of the document. Uh, within that, we have fields of the documents. And within that, we have values associated with the documents. Right? So given that I can query ranges on this, and ranges turn into prefixes, that essentially gives me uh, a, an ability to very quickly retrieve all of the fields in a document or a particular field in a particular document uh, and, and retrieve those. But maybe I don't know my document ID yet. Maybe I don't know uh, exactly which document I'm trying to query, but I know characteristics of that. And I want to search on it based off of those characteristics. So that's when I start querying on the value itself. And this is our basic secondary indexing. Uh, that's the, the basic concept of secondary indexing that we want to use here. Uh, so in order to support that, we'll take parts of the value, we'll create those as inverted index entries. Right? So from that value, I, I generate a set of terms. Each of those terms maps to a set of UUIDs. Those UUIDs are references to this other table, to our document table. Right? And then maybe I keep which field was, was seen in there, uh, and perhaps some other information. Uh, what that looks like is when I'm ingesting data, I have a, a record right, or a document. That record goes into a single place, everything grouped uh, under the same UUID in my document table. Uh, and then I generate a, a set of index entries. Right? So, so one place in the document table becomes multiple places in the index table. Uh, on the flip side, during query, if I have a particular term, I'm going to find that term at one spot in the index table, but it's going to map back to several UUIDs inside of the document table. Uh, so that's basic what we would call term distributed information retrieval. Uh, and it's a great technique. We use it all over the place. Uh, we extend it uh, to do a whole bunch of things like geographical indexing. Uh, but it has flaws. right? It's not perfect. Uh, and in fact, in the field of information retrieval, there are sort of two dominant spaces. One is term distributed information retrieval. The other is document distributed information retrieval. Uh, and for document information, document distributed information retrieval, we tend to group things together into partitions or into shards. So we take a set of documents, uh, and this is the, the diagram associated with that. We take a set of documents, group those together in a partition, uh, and generate index entries and put those index entries for that set of documents into the exact same partition. Right, so in this type of hierarchy, I've grouped my index entries and my document entries together. That gives us a, a different view here. As we're ingesting data, we'll take a record, put that into one partition in our table, and inside of that, it has document portions and index portions, just like our, our simpler indexing model. On the query side, if we have a single term, we can map that term into each of the partitions and look for the index entries associated with the documents uh, associated with that particular term uh, in each of those partitions. So we parallelize the query across all of our partitions. Uh, so these are a couple of the, the simple generic table designs that we're using uh, in particular inside of Squirrel, inside of our product. Uh, we've extended these. We've, we've added a whole bunch of others to do uh, graph organization, uh, to do uh, some other specialized types of indexing, and you know, some modeling associated with schema. Uh, but there you have it. Uh, that's really how we're adding a little bit of organization to a schemaless world. Thank you, Adam. So you're seeing the infrastructure for big data becoming hardened uh, and so-called enterprise ready. Everybody talks about that. Accumulo is pay playing a key part of that, not only in terms of its ability to provide fine-grained levels of security, but also high levels of scalability and performance. So check out Squirrel, sqrl.com for more information. Uh, some of Adam's work will also be on there. Also, check out youtube.com slash siliconangle for a 
these and other videos associated with this topic, go to wikibon.org for all the research and check out siliconangle.com for all the blogs. Thanks for watching, everybody. This is Dave Vellante of Wikibon, and this is The Cube. We'll see you next time.